yes please start so hello everybody so this evening we have the second in the series competency based assessment and uh, this will be the session will be taken by dr borna ganguli who is a professor of pharmacology and also the assistant dean of professional development at ps medical college karmsad gujarat we have listened to dr ganguli the last session and that is, this is in continuation of the last session this is the second in the series uh, let me hand over to dr borna ganguli we will start the presentation dr borna please thank you so much thank you good evening one and all those who are in front of your laptop or with the mobile for this session good evening everybody and i wish and i hope all of you are safe in this crisis situation and that's why that's how and that's why we are here anyway let me go uh, start the discussion of this session uh, in last week in last session we started discussion on assessment competency based assessment in that we started with a problem we will come back to the problem perhaps in the next session uh, we revised certain terminologies uh, which theoretically we know but now because of the entry of the new system of competency based medical education uh, we have again revised those and we have to now be seasoned with those uh, as we all most of us all of us studied in traditional system worked in study traditional system till yesterday perhaps the last year we were working in traditional system but now from this year will be we will be into a new system so we have to get accustomed with certain terminologies and we discussed those terminologies like competency based medical education competency based assessment what is competency what is competent then assessment for learning uh, which in other words known as formative assessment assessment of learning which in other words known as summative assessment those various new terminologies we revised and then we uh, discussed about the difference between uh, how does this new system this competency based medical education differ from that of traditional system and then we just went uh, we revised certain salient features uh, on of M mci document and then i uh, asked you to do some homework so first today we will take up those homework in continuation to previous uh, session and then we will go forward with the alignment then we will try to develop a cba module in pharmacology uh, and along in line with again incorporating uh, another thing like internal assessment so we will be clubbing everything together at the end so this will be our line of discussion in this in today's session so let us first start with the examples before uh, going to the examples let me first convey my heartfelt thanks to dr dimple dr sunita chaya dr surbhi dr dhania dhania dr uh, alka bansal and dr veena who have given a very means valuable in input that that their effort uh, and contribution to start this today's discussion so we are thankful to you so this was the overall skeleton of assessment of cbma based on which we discussed and we wanted to do some uh, some planning of assessment based on certain competencies what we discussed in last session so first example the first one to submit was 
Dr. Dimple Mapara Mehta. She has taken up competency number uh, PH 1.32, which talks of bronchial asthma. Uh, she mentioned of the domains, teaching learning methods, inti vertical integration they want to do with respiratory medicine, and perhaps it was written in the document itself. She suggested certain assessment plan. Uh, this competency Sorry, we can't hear you. But now you're not audible. Yeah, you're totally lost. But I'm going offline. You have to come with us. I think there is a yes, she's back. Uh, Dr. Dharma, you're actually trying to connect. Uh, yes. am, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, so, can we go back one because we could, you were not audible in between. Okay. Let's okay. go one slide back. Am I audible now? You are. Hello? You are. Yes, but we I can't see okay. the slides. Uh, yes. yes yeah. Now, yes. now is it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, she has shared this competency on bronchial asthma and mentioned about the domains levels, teaching learning methods, vertical integration, and then suggested the following assessment plan. Written and practical, they will be going for a formative assessment, problem based. MCQs because perhaps with the idea in line with uh, knows how and then uh, short answer questions, modified essay type questions. And then in practical, they will be going uh, for Viva, they will be taking Viva on various dosage forms, etc. Practicals, they will be going for, for prescription writing and criticism exercise, perhaps because of knows how and shows how now show, because shows how is there perhaps uh, they want to incorporate one skills method here skill plan injection feeling exercise maybe example she has given of adrenaline and she will be going for os, uh, ospi that is uh, on various inhalational modalities. I think it is how the inhalational uh, drugs are administered and because it is self-administered, perhaps that, that skill uh, has to be tested from the student so that they can uh, give this patient education, this thing to the patients when they will be practicing. Similarly, summative, and uh, summative uh, written as well as summative practical. So this is the repetition of the uh, above one. That is the plan. So right now I am not uh, going further into that because later on I will come across with the um, formative and summative questions. So right now I am just stopping here for 
the plants. Okay. Then coming to Dr. Sunita Chaya's uh, plan, she has planned on uh, competency 1.26. Uh, actions, types, doses, side effects, contraindications of drugs modulating renin angiotensin and aldosterone system. Initially, she has uh, taken up the SLOs, then the domain, then the level. Level is up to knows and knows how, and then teaching learning in uh, how TL method, and then assessment method. There also formative assessment they will be doing through modified essay type question, MCQ, short answer question. Uh, Case-based exercise to fill up ADR reporting form. Now uh, here, uh, later on, I will come back to this very particular point as well as Dr. Dimple's OSP. Uh, what she has mentioned about the skills, I will come back again in course of the slides and later on in course of the content and all. So these are the uh, these are the plan. It will be sharing the I think the slides will be shared. So very details I am not going through. Then Dr. Surbhi Gupta, who has uh, given the plan on uh, pH 1.19 on CNS drugs. Uh, here, what uh, I may be wrong, but what I understand is that little bit detailing is necessary based on in line with domain level in line with first, uh, of course, first thing which should come is the specific learning objectives, then the domain, then the level. And based on that, with the learning objectives in line with that, the questions are to be framed. So um, short essay questions, case-based questions, where it will be placed? Case-based question, will it be placed in some uh, formative assessment or will it be placed in summative assessment? This needs, needs to be, uh, what can I say? We should draw our attention in these issues because it is, competency-based assessment, unlike traditional assessment, we need to take care of these issues. We can put any question, short essay question, we can put uh, advanced uh, MCQs or advanced uh, MCQs, apply, applied based MCQs, but it should be lined up with the domain and SLOs. So also Viva Bosi. Uh, how you have want to take Viva Gosi, uh, whether if it is only knowledge based K and all. So you can just ask, name the drugs, etc., etc. But if knows how or little above level, higher level circum, then you can discuss with case based problems. Now, case based problems, when we will be discussing, where we will be discussing, will it be in the summative assessment? Can we have that much of time to discuss case-based problem in Viva Vossi uh, during summative assessment? Or it is better placed in formative assessment when we have got enough ample time. Uh, so those things need to be uh, taken care of while planning. Then comes Dr. Dhania's uh, plan. Uh, she has planned on local anesthetics and then mentioned about the domain teaching learning method, assessment method, ACQ and Viva. That was uh, the fantastic one because perhaps she has taken care of whether this competency belongs to core topic or non-core topic. Maybe based on that, uh, she has planned assessment method. Assessment plan, can we ask lignocaine is not orally? Why lignocaine is not orally? Of course, why not? We need to ask uh, those things depending on the domain and level. Uh, regarding one of the assessment plan as OSP, uh, Objective Structured uh, Practical Examination, 
uh, I'm not sure on this topic actually what was the learning uh, specific learning objective based on which what is the domain and then level and based on that OSPI to be structured what OSPI we can structure do we can we structure the um, what can I say uh, subcutaneous or the uh, in administration of local anesthetics or what exactly I couldn't make it out if Dr. Dhania later on can post us the basis of including OSP against the topic of local anesthetics at second MBBS level. Then comes Dr. Alka Bansal, uh, she has, uh, I think she has shared a lot of uh, areas, three areas, one on ocular disorders, the second on pharmacogenomics and on pharmacoeconomics. Mm, uh, I think first, uh, Madam tried to set the SLOs, which I can see in this slide because I have copied all the things uh, in my slides. So these were the things which was written in one of her slides. And then competency core, uh, yes, core area, it was yes. Domain level, domain knowledge and level knows how. Can be integrated with ophthalmology and partly can be covered with the dosage forms uh, in clinical pharmacy. That means in practical, it can be taken up. That's what I have understood. Then coming to pharmacogenomics and pharmacoeconomics, the competency core, it is non-core. Fine, domain is uh, knowledge, level knows how. Here is a question, I uh, means from my side, I may be wrong, but uh, that can be explained. When it is non-core, pharmacogenomics knows how I am, I am not able to get it. Now, at the end of the session, the SLOs were mentioned, but the questions which have been set up, where it should be placed, uh, whether in formative assessment or in summative assessment, uh, so that was not clear. And then part of pharmacoeconomics can be covered with prescription writing. Uh, that means in practical, uh, with clinical pharmacology, though the number is given as 3.1 and critical appraisal of prescription. So while critical appraisal of prescription, maybe pharmacoeconomics may be only a small, only a part of that. When we uh, audit or appraise uh, prescription writing, we take a number of items or number of areas. One of the area can be or will be pharmacoeconomics. So in that way, what I mean to say that we have to specify that where it has to be placed based on competency, what was the competency more than based on not competency that is learning objectives domain and the level dr veena nayak excellently excellent this thing uh, she has taken up that means competency uh, competency number was not mentioned enumerate and identify the drug formulations and drug delivery system which i understand this is from the general pharmacology from the at the outset the domain knows and shows level shows how and at the end of the session students should be able to slos have been uh, elaborated she has only gone for osp okay that is very nice and but it has to be placed where osp can be keep, shall we keep this osp in formative assessment or in summative assessment then it is just complete. Even in OSPI, she has elaborated how the trays are to be kept, the stations, single station. It means 
uh, a lot of effort has been given into that but again uh, it will be complete where can we keep such type of ospi can we keep it in uh, formative can we keep it in summative only or can we keep it in both so thus till now i am repeating the previous slide of the um, previous day we have come up to the second box that means second or third box may be objective structure but it is not objective structured clinical examination when it is shows how it is osp as well so thus we from the competency through the slos through the domains and levels we have come to determine that what type of question we can ask from that particular competency in cba module whether it should be short answer question multiple question uh, modified essay question etc etc so finally important notes for us in to do areas what we have to remember and practice is assess what is important not just what is easy that is the first crux of cba competency based assessment all assessments involves judgment and judgment should occur collectively this particular word judgment is not individual judgment of an examiner if the judgment while setting the paper while setting the question from there the judgment our judgment starts and it will end up to the multiple assessments and through multiple assessors so there are a variety of formative assessment techniques that can be applied in didactic or in experiential settings and can be used to perfect students knowledge skills and attitudes so now coming to what are the various ways we can assess or assessment techniques rather now coming to assessment techniques earlier which we said as plans there are certain i have just collected for you for our setup there are lots of literatures uh, in net and all many of us are really studying through this really working on this but first and foremost thing which we should remember is that we have to now think of our setup indian context looking into our infrastructure our resources our faculty members number of students and so so many things so what is we are into now cbme we have to enter into cba so what are the strategies we can pick up in our indian context and we can continue with cba first strategy is quiz though less practiced in a very handful of medical colleges in handful of lectures there are quizzes so now we can think of that and that is not very difficult for us and there actually day to day regular knowledge assessment soon after the lecture or teaching can be done or today i have taken up a topic next day before in continuation maybe part 1 was taken up part 2 i have to take in next class so before just before starting the class for 10 minutes i can take up a small quiz which will be uh, assessing that how far knowledge of the students and all which can be followed by feedback feedback also we should remember a part of cba value of this quiz is 
Students can be informed the strengths and weakness then and there through feedback. It provides immediate feedback and debriefing can improve learning. Yes, this is also a, a, an important contribution from quiz. Challenges, yes, if we take too many quizzes, then students may lose interest and very frequent, frequent uh, quiz with the very frequent quizzes and all. Now, another challenge is that it will, it can only give a feedback, but it is difficult to score. So this will not add up to their internal assessment or to their any scoring system. So this quiz can only show a path or give a feedback that how they are progressing. That's all. Feasibility, yes, we can take it up at the end of each system or maybe at the end of each topic. It's up to the faculty who has to decide. Another uh, strategy which we can take up and we are all, already we are taking up that is MCQ. It is same as Hello, Your voice is lost. It's very poor connectivity at our side. Am I audible now? Yes, now you are audible. Yes. Uh, so, uh, what I was uh, uh, mentioning of MCQs, now with CBMA, MCQs will be continuing, but while preparing MCQs, we have to be more careful. Based on our domains and all, we have to prepare our MCQs. It is not, it should not be, if it is the domain says just knowledge and all, then maybe... Uh, the simple MCQs can be set up. But when it is for higher level, knows how, then applied aspects have to be incorporated. It can be some sort of a problem is given based on that four options are given, are written like that, the MCQs are to be structured. The challenges here are, now in many medical colleges, the strength is 250. So correction of MCQs is a challenge. So now we have to take help of the technology uh, with either computer-based uh, MCQ test or with OMR sheets. Or now we are finding some Google Forms, but Google Forms again may not serve the whole purpose. So we have to think of the innovations or maybe the we have to look for or prepare for the uh, we have to utilize the technology part, computerized uh, MCQ tests and all, online MCQ tests. Feasibility, it is feasible. Uh, ideally, at the end of each session, if it is done, it is fine. But now we are having one year, 11 months course. So I don't think many will not accept that at the end of every system, we can take up uh, an MCQ. So, or maybe two MCQ tests in each term, 
total for four MCQ tests. And yes, here, unlike quiz, these marks can be added or incorporated to internal assessment. For formative assessment, the other strategy is problem solving exercise, which can be done in practical classes. Problems from every system or each system, you develop problems. Instead of just asking them, you write a prescription because prescription writing is a practice. Instead of just simply asking them that uh, write a prescription on this and this, give a problem, try to solve it through that problem solving exercise of WHO, that P drug concept and all. So in that way, it would be better. And it will be in line with CBA as well. Uh, value is that it helps develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. Challenges creating problems and uh, faculty training or development. F faculty also must be thorough with this problem solving exercise and all. Feasibility, it is feasible in every system where prescription writing and practical classes are there. When we are integrating with every system, we can keep two to three problems and that can be solved. Assignments, which is a new thing. Uh, earlier, the students were doing assignments. We never used to bother or never used to give importance to that. But now to channelize this assignment, these assignments can be taken up or incorporated in our practical classes. What we can do, pharmacovigilance, this collection of adverse drug reactions is important exercise for us. So why not to give it to the students as an assignment right from the beginning, from general pharmacology, when they are learning adverse drug reactions in the first general pharmacology class, let them start collecting ADRs from outdoors patients or from through prescription audit in the later stage. Value, scope of active learning. They will be learning actively here. It is not didactically, I am asking that you collect nausea, vomiting, diarrhea from so-and-so drugs. No, not like that. The students will be collecting the ADS, asking the patients, going through the prescriptions and all and all. So there is a scope of active learning here. Challenges, students may not be motivated to do so. Yes, because they will say, and that's what we are also facing in our uh, institution, in our college. What they are trying to do, they copy because this is an assignment which is nothing new for us. We have started this two to three years back. They copy the seniors' uh, assignments. And we find it, we can find it out that they are copying it because they are not motivated to do so. But we need to explain the value of this. And we can, we have to find out the way that whether they are copying it or they have actually found, let them collect one ADR. But that has to be given importance and that should be a genuine one. Then only they, we will be valuing the scope of their active learning as well. So if not very many, at least two assignments in each term uh, can be given to them and we should give marks and that has to be added to internal assessment then some reward will be given and that is that has become a formal and formative assessment then comes ospi and dops directly observed this uh, practical examination so we do have scope now in practical session the administration of drugs in mannequins uh, i don't know uh, i find it whether we should call it as OSP or directly observed, uh, what can I say, these DOPS. Because we are observing during examination, formative assessment, we are observing how they are drawing the drug and how they are uh, administering the drug, uh, going through various steps and all. It can be OSP, it can be called DOPS. And now I go back to uh, Dr. Dimple Mehta's uh, skill, this thing, I think here is the, is one scope of your exercise, what you have mentioned. Then communication skill, 
Dr. Regi also mentioned that in pharmacology, we do have a lot of scope for communication skill, like in bronchial asthma, then in tuberculosis treatment protocol and all. We have got a lot of scope. So when we are taking uh, the sessions in theory, in practical, can we take up the information to patients, uh, patients' awareness? We do not talk with the patients. The prescribers talk very less to the patients. So can we develop such module here and it can be incorporated in the formative assessment. And we will be during assessment, we will be observing how a student is talking with the patient let, let, like that. Let me be the patient and he or she is advising me how to take the inhaler. So that communication skill can be assessed here. And the students here gain a hands-on experience Though it is time time consuming, but I think in the long run it is rewarding. So four such OSPs can be done over a period of 11 months. Last but not the least, which is the same as that of the traditional method is the terminal examination, both theory and practical. One in first term and the one as prelim and the marks will be added to internal assessment. So I find these are the strategies which are feasible for us in our setup if we are fall when we are following competency based medical education and we are adopting in this way the CBA assessment part. Now we have planned that these are the ways we can do now, a little bit deeper into that or micro planning. Like when we are putting up, be it informative assessment or be it in summative assessment. Uh, when it is the written part, uh, long essay question, I don't think nowadays we are very much um, favoring this long essay question. I have taken it up from the MCI document. It's like I just copied it from the MCI uh, document. I have incorporated it as I have just uh, edited it to modified essay question. That sounds better. And the question stem should be structured and mark, marking distribution should be provided. If that be so, then we are following the competency. We are following the domain. We are following the level and thus, and also we have gone through the SLOs and based on all these things, we have structured the modified essay question and with each question, the marking distribution is provided. In that very document, uh, MCI also has given as example, use the action verbs, whether it should be enumerate, whether it, is, it should be discussed, whether it should be compare and contrast, we have to be very careful while preparing such type of question, the verbs which are used for higher domains. And please avoid simple recall based questions. And modify long essay questions, can we keep it for the formative assessment? I don't think so. It is not a very good uh, idea to keep long essay question in formative assessment be it um, terminal examination or so. Yes, modified essay question, we can keep it in formative assessment if we only go through terminal examination. Uh, and also in prelim, it can be kept even in the uh, summative assessment also. Now there is a homework for those who have contributed, not only for those who have contributed, now the whole thing is shared with everybody. If you can develop at least one question, from what has been shared with you, the competency plan, the comp competency based assessment plan, like from asthma, it can be a modified essay question. So, structure one modified essay question and share it with us. It is for everybody, it is not only for Dr. Dimple Mapara, uh, anybody can prepare, and then we will see, that we will have a wealth of uh, questions. Then short notes, the question should be task oriented rather than write a short note on uh, proton pump inhibitors. Okay, 
so we can ask in a different way uh, so in that way we can keep it informative assessment so also we can keep it in summative assessment depending on the domain we can use the verb when it is a little higher domain we can go for compare and contrast type of thing so again those who have mentioned of the short notes and yes in last sessions uh, examples please prepare uh, a short note uh, structured short note type of question and share it with us we can also go for reasoning questions and these provide excellent opportunities for testing integration clinical reasoning and analytical ability of a student which can be kept not only in formative assessment but also in summative assessment one of the example like explain why adrenaline is preferred medication in anaphylactic shock this can be of two to three marks three marks question but it will give uh, some sort of insight of how much the student has understood not only has come to know understood then comprehension and then application through theory question we can make it out we can also ask short notes on applied aspects which can be asked in summative assessment because summative assessment is the final one uh, but in formative assessment, we can break up in a different uh, different way to understand the understand the what can I say the progress of the students understanding learning can be asked in summative assessment like describe the clinical significance of combining drug A and drug B in X Y Z condition. MCQs already I have mentioned but uh, not to forget is that mcq better now we have to concentrate and pay our attention to preparing mcq like through scenario based <laughs> single response with four options in the answer avoid one liner and negative terms in the stem question and now you all know through various uh, workshops in uh, medical education teachers training program uh, these things i have just mentioned it let me not uh, go because the time is flying and we should avoid all of the above and none of the above options so finally we have to follow this path when we know competency immediately it has to be there in our mind the domains levels and slos we take our classes after that we take our sessions lectures and i think when we are planning our slos and planning the lesson plan how to take the class and all then and there itself we should plan the assessment also <laughs> now going back to cba what gmer 2019 is telling just quickly i'm going through that GMER mentions of components of internal assessment. Those who have read, it is known to all of you that now uh, it is little different than what we were following. There is internal assessment, both in theory as well as in practical. Theory includes theory tests, sent ups, seminars. I have just copied it from the document itself. Nothing new I have created here interest in the subject scientific attitude written test should be short notes and creative writing experience this is again another new thing one can think of the uh, in the assignment form if you develop certain assignment in that way you can keep some marks over there which can be added to internal assessment in practical we have uh, relevant for us is osp uh, dops a mini cex is not for us and records maintenance that means journal and logbook attitudinal assessment again uh, I, th I think multiple assessors and multiple assessments are necessary for that next is the colleges and teachers should try to build capacity to use a variety of assessment tools i think for that only we are here together so that with combined effect we can develop a very fruitful plan for our own institution 
A number of tools are available in the form of assessment toolbox. It is there in the document. Now, another important thing which is uh, new, uh, new, little bit modified for us is that internal assessment marks. So long we had internal assessment marks which were added to the university examination, both separately, both in theory as well as in practical. But now what is happening, the internal assessment mark, marks will not be added to university examination, but it will be reflected as a separate head of passing at the summative examination. These concepts have been incorporated in the proposed regulation uh, 2019. Then they are also mentioning that regular periodic examination shall be conducted throughout the course and there shall be no less than three internal assessment examination in each pre or paraclinical subject. That means we have to have minimum three internal assessment in howsoever way you can. Internal assessment marks will reflect as separate head in passing at the summative examination. That means in the final examination, that mark sheet, internal assessment marks will be reflected. Coming to summative assessment, assessment logistics for the university examination, there are two papers. Each paper, uh, in theory, each paper of 100 marks, uh, so 200 marks and practical plus viva is 100. Okay, earlier viva marks was added to theory, but now theory is solely theory and practical viva uh, relates to 100 marks. We should take care of that. So just we have to schedule a formative and summative assessment for the next class. Just an example I'm sharing with you. So we have finally the course period is 11 months. If we divide it first term and second term, it shows that from October to March, if it is tentatively first term, and then second term, March to August, because second MBBS university exam as per MCI document has to be in September. But we also have to think of that October to March, October, November is the time festive season. In certain areas, maybe uh, winter break in December. So we have to think of Diwali or the festival break or the autumn break or winter break. In Sikkim and all, they give winter break. Okay. In second term, March to August, we have summer vacation. So if 15, 15 days of two vacations, that means one month gone there, or maybe three weeks gone there. So hardly we have got how many months, not even with examinations and all we have got only nine and a half months tentatively. It's not absolute number. So I have just uh, prepared a plan of CBA a tentative plan of CBA and share, I'm sharing with you. Uh, because as per MCA, there has to be a lot of, uh, means more than uh, minimum, uh, I should not say more than one, minimum three internal assessment. And the internal assessment marks have to be reflected also in the mark list. Uh, so from October, if second MBBS starts, it has uh, in August, the prelim exam has to be there because in September, university examination has to be there. So how can we put up the assessment? Because time to time we do have the classes and so many events and all. So plan A and plan B, two plans I'm sharing with you. Uh, in plan A, I am not keeping any terminal examination, only one full examination that is prelim in August and continuous assessment, that means formative assessment, I have put up a project. In December, I will be, uh, we can plan on one MCQ. 
in march we can plan another second mcq in july we can plan third mcq and in august prelim no terminal examination and project or assignments what you say i can say it as assignment i can say it as project to collect um, adrs okay and like that or if any student no uh, adrs i think collection of adrs and all can be go can go to uh, practical i'm sorry project if a student wants to do any research project or maybe experiential learning if they want to write something or so we have to give some weightage to that plan b is two mcq tests and two proper examination so called type of uh, term, uh, traditional examination that is terminal examination and prelim so number of internal assessment is four as per plan a in written plan a in practical can be dops on im and iv administration in mannequins because now mannequins are mandatory for all the medical colleges in pharmacology department 15 15 minimum then spotting on dosage forms and graphs viva and journal uh, or logbook that can occur initially with the general pharmacology in november december then from january you give assignment for pharmacology uh, sorry pharmacovigilance program that is adr collection and no terminal examination nothing and then in july assignment on real prescription audit uh, and that can be 10 in number and then osp on communication patient information process mm -hmm. and finally prelim so in practical in that way if we take up each exercise one two three we have got five exercise plus two assignments assignments and all so in that way we can uh, and prelims so we have got in that way number of internal assessment in practical as per plan a is five plus two seven as per plan b we keep in november december only dops and spotting and viva assignments we are giving we take one terminal examination and give further assignment then in july we go for one osp and then in august one prelim examination there also we are no less than three rather more five plus two so in that way uh, we can structure uh, competency based uh, assessment it is some sort of calendar or scheduling calendar of 11 month how we can uh, just plan cba uh, it can it will vary from institution to institution depending on the resources depending on the faculty program and it can vary it is just what came in my mind i am sharing it with you would be very happy and you have an uh, again to do list and homework uh, you go to just uh, pay attention to number two you have to plan one year schedule of assessment in your department as per guidelines and share it with us so that before putting it up into into the uh, institution we can discuss the pro and cons in the next uh, session so it would be nice and we may get more ideas so that our uh, planning will be much refined and better and not only this one would be very happy if you can structure a question uh, as per what you have suggested on the assessment plan in the previous exercises if you can structure uh, a question like short note modified essay type question in whatever competencies you selected it is for all of you and it would be very nice for us and uh, i think the time is up so i should must end here uh, if any question can we take up any question or any doubts or anything i am at the end of my uh, discussion hello can, can i say something Or may I yes, say something? Yes, or yes, sure, ma'am. Sure. 
Yeah, yes. this is just regarding that DOPS, what you were saying, whether we should call it OSPI or whether we should call it DOPS. Now, yes, now yes. though it is a directly observe everything, the DOPS is mm. a workplace-based assessment. That means the patient, uh, the yes. person should be at the workplace where he's working, okay. that means in the wards, and then the procedure is done with the patients and not the simulated patient, real patients. And then when okay. that is observed, uh, by the okay. examiner, like a mini CX. Uh, uh, okay. Only mini CX is for the clinical examination, DOPS is for the procedural thing. So we can't procedural. call it as a DOPS. Uh, okay. we, uh, whenever, uh, it, yeah, and whenever it is a, some uh, mannequin or the standardized patient is involved, we should call it as OSPI. Ideally, OSPI, that procedure means procedure of uh, technical procedure. It is not the anything which you are later on going to do in human, like uh, uh, processing of for uh, blood sugar, proteins, urine analysis, all those procedures. No, they usually come under uh, uh, OSPI. On the other hand, whenever you are taking or uh, making a temperature or clinical uh, history taking or uh, like communication and whatever we are, we are doing, no? they are actually the OSCE, and not okay. OSCE. It means that okay. is what I think. No? I'm very sure for the dogs, but always I get confused in this OSCE and OSCE, and I ask this question to someone. So what I'm explaining to you was the uh, reply which was given to me. Okay, thank you so much, madam. That means uh -huh. what we understand is that uh, in pharmacology, we don't have any scope of dogs now. No, 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 no. It will come only if you post your Definitely. students in the ward yes. and if they are allowed to do any procedure over there. Otherwise, yes. no. It will be but no, awesome. you can go. Yes, in Indian scenario in second MBBS or the phase two, what now they are telling in phase two, for pharmacology aspect, we don't have any scope for DOPS. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, Thank you so much. It was a very nice. So it's very stupid. Can I mention okay. something about OSCE and OSCE? Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Most important. Yes. Uh, my understanding is uh, the difference between OSCE and OSCE. Uh, the Department of Anatomy, Physiology, or Biochemistry. That means in the preclinical and certain parts of the paraclinical. Uh, you have to depend, the, the, we call it, otherwise in principle they are the same. We call it OSPI and wherever there is a direct uh, uh, opportunity for uh, having the interaction with patients or using clinical material, so there we call it OSCE. OSPE and OSCE, the basic difference is how and to what extent we are using clinical materials and patient materials and patients directly. So in that case, if we use them, uh, we call it OSCE, OSCE, or else in case of say physiology or uh, uh, histopathology or uh, anatomy specimens, so there we call it OSPI. This is my understanding about OSPI and OSCE. Same, same uh, as I have mentioned. Correct, uh, Dr. Shantanu? I think that is right. Okay, thank but you. Then, yes. in, in pharmacology, there is some scope of getting some OSCE exercises, okay, or assessment uh, when you are using patient materials. But otherwise, it will be OSPI. That's my understanding. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. I would like to make a comment. I would like to draw the attention to the two plans, uh, A and B, of assessment calendar that you have made very wonderful very wonderful talk and uh, very lucidly prepared and very clearly stated i just would like to say as if i were a student i would like to assess more upon uh, how the question is going to be asked in the final exam so i would rather have a um, the term in the plan b you had more terminal and preliminary exam that was quite like the final uh, summative exam that should be and I'm preparing in that manner that would be more um, uh, I would appreciate as a student more 
that kind of a situation. But this plan A is very wonderful. And you're seeing that uh, a student is learning and you're giving weightage to many other things like him doing a ICMR project or doing some other extra work. You know, that we have never given weightage for that aspect. So that, that would be a good point too. But this is one thing which I would like to do. Um, when we are training our students, if you're training for the Olympics, you should train for that kind of a track. And you cannot do it on a track which is, uh, you know, muddy and this kind. You know, if you're going to play tennis on a clay court and a grass court, and your final is in a grass court, you have to practice in the grass court. So I would say that if I am going to have MCQs, not in the final exam, not in the summative, then there is no point. But you would, I would know how much I have learned and it would prepare me for a need. I'm talking from the student's point of view, I hope. Uh, and yes, Prince, uh, actually, uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is this is regarding the, I think the, you need to clarify a little more on these terminologies like, what is a term examination? What is formative? What is prelim? Okay, so the, many a times and what is internal assessment? So many a times there is some kind of confusion and uh, people may tend to use them interchangeably. When MCI says, if you go to your previous slide, that there should be at least three terminal examinations. Somewhere you have said, in the document also they have said, at least three internal terminal assessment. examination, no less than three internal assessment examination. Yes. Now, yes. when you talk of internal assessment, uh, mm -hmm. it becomes a yes. very, very elaborate or ceremonial kind of examination. Mm -hmm. And that yes. is something yes. which I yes. think we need to, neither we can be, we, we, we are, uh, we can afford to have that kind of a ceremonial uh, internal assessment that you declare the exam date and the students go uh, uh, start bunking uh, classes. And then uh, for seven days or 15 days, you cannot find their faces and then on a given day or a given couple of days or three days, they will come and you will take their exam. So the whole purpose of formative assessment is lost. So uh, the we need to possibly- uh, Yes, uh, uh, I have uh, uh, mentioned the, the in this slide- Unnecessary anxiety around the assessment. examination. Okay, so we it should not go in a manner that it is a miniature version of the summative examination internal assessment should not uh, be uh, viewed as a uh, miniature version of summative examination so that is my understanding it should be more of a formative when you talk of formative examination uh, yes that yes, is I again that yes yes that is again yes formative ex examination cannot be one of phenomenon uh, formative examination is a dynamic kind of assessment mm -hmm. that has to going to and then during this yes. continuous assessment this is basically more more correct term is continuous assessment as we are we are embedding the assessment into the teaching learning so mm. on a day-to-day -day basis you are actually mm. keep on assessing by different strategies of assessment or at the same time trying to mm. remain objective there is a risk that that it could be okay uh, it is vulnerable to become subjective so that subjectivity is to be avoided to, to, to the extent possible but the moment we try to make it after two months there will be one exam after the uh, uh, fourth month there will be another exam after six months there will be another exam so that will create anxiety among the students and for seven days or five days they will not be around they will try to uh, get the uh, what are the again people will the students will come to you what are the probable questions what are the suggestions Okay, even for the formative examination. So okay. that is something but, uh, which we have to avoid, avoid consciously. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Sir, I, uh, now can I, uh, uh, Dr. Khilani. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what I understand uh, is that internal assessment is both summative and formative. This is one thing. And second, number of uh, internal assessments are three. Now, once the number of internal assessment three, my question is, is prelim not an internal assessment? No, if it is, Kilani, would you explain? Would you explain why do you think that the internal assessment is both formative and summative? Would you explain? It is formative. It is formative because there is a, so a, a rich opportunity for feedback. 
no why it is summative and, why it is summative it is it is a summative because a portion of internal assessment goes for eligibility criteria so it is both okay no 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 I second thing is no no please tell no. that again internal assessment is uh, as we know today it is a uh, eligibility criteria pass criteria but not scoring criteria okay now once internal assessment is eligibility criteria or uh, pass criteria that means it contributes to summation and therefore internal assessment is both the so I, 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 as i as i understand in internal assessment yes i agree that internal assessment is an entry criteria for appearing in the summative examination but then that is the responsibility on the department on the university on the teachers on the system that we have to get them up to a level so that there is at least 50% of their performance when they are eligible for appearing in the summative exam and it is our duty to make them up to 50% until and unless they can achieve this 50% we have to keep on providing them or getting them immersed in the teaching learning environment so that sir way, as far as I, as far as i understand from the assessment yes. module as far as yes. i understand from assessment module internal assessment is both summative and formative we will not go into that controversy what is more important that unless we understand that prelim is one just example of internal assessment then we are left with only two internal assessments which are feasible now look at the student there are three subjects three examinations plus three major clinical subjects where at least two internal assessments have to be given do we want to take only examinations or teach them also therefore That's therefore true. internal assessment should be considered two internal assessment taken at the end of fourth month and uh, fourth and uh, seventh or eighth month and finally prelim examination in the last month followed by university exam only then it will be possible and feasible perhaps that all three subjects plus three clinical subjects will be tested per student dr monica jain sir what i understand is that sir uh, meanwhile yes, let me mention what i understand is that internal assessment actually is a document how far a student is progressing it is student score it is not an exam per se here the components of internal examination can anything theory test quiz set mina that's why i have mentioned in that way it can be the terminal exam it also includes prelim examination and internal We internal examination actually reflects the whole year's students performance that is internal assessment you must assessment. understand madam that uh, internal, internal assessment, assessment can be taken as a small uh, theory and practical examination and it can be taken as a, a part theory and practical examination this variation will be dependent on the institution depending on the availability and of course university mandate but minimum 3 have to be given one of which has to be prelim only then it will be feasible exactly exactly so now it depends on the institution how they are planning whether they will keep only prelim and rest only mcqs or whether they will keep keep one prelim one terminal and one or two mcqs they may not keep any mcqs as well but madam we must remember is, that if, mc cannot be more than 20% of all assessment in the university following that rule or that the mandate we will have only 20% of assessment through mcqs because mcqs have a number of limitations which we all know yes and when we are ca calculating internal assessment mark how much weightage we will give for mcqs how much weightage we will give for terminal and how much weightage we can give for prelim like that in plan b say 
if we okay. give for I internal actually, assessment actually madam i have i have prepared a plan which i will be discussing in my assessment uh, and weightage and all that we i have tried to make it simpler one of course when time comes i will be discussing yes, but yes, it, is it is possible it is possible okay it is possible sir it is possible and but if we don't keep mcqs at any moment then we are not following cba competency based assessment there is no then it is somewhat like traditional assessment only two terminal type of examination one prelim and one terminal and uh, both the marks together with uh, internal assessment there is no terminal examination it is only internal assessment it has to be a continuous assessment keeping our uh, one eye on the competency yes. we have to uh, do that uh, follow yes. that way maybe it may, may miss we have to really think whether it has to be mcq or what other things we can bring in apart from the mcq means i am not sure i'm just thinking over uh, because sometimes many of our mcq go into that recall mode so rather than that uh, what you have shown that reasoning and all those things now whether we can bring in or whether we can build in the uh, clinic uh, means case based mcqs which are difficult but we have to modify that portion but it has to be something which goes continuously so that we can see at least that know how competency is developed uh, uh, in students whether they reach that to, uh, that level the yes. more objection yes. which i have is that uh, should every competency be tested for and that means at the end of the class would there be assessment for each competency is it uh, feasible no, no sir it is no no possible. it is not possible no, sir it is not possible therefore we have to develop a plan at least we can maybe for once in 15 days or system end or a topic end yes depending yes. on that only we can do otherwise not yes, uh, uh, can i make that another comment can i make another comment can you really yes, dissect sure. or can you really distinguish or make a clear dichotomy between examination and formative assessment the moment you say there is a terminal examination it becomes a terminal examination in my view you are actually drifting from formative assessment because of the But, because sir, of because uh, because, of conventional, because of the conventional anxiety and fear around examination in the psyche of most of us even with us so we have to download or offload as much as possible the weightage to the terminal examination although the mcq uh, the mci has said that minimum of the uh, internal assessments but that is minimum of 3 you can have more internal assessments also but as much as possible uh, the internal assessment mechanism and strategies can be embedded with the regular teaching learning sessions and then trying to pull that and trying to give some score okay to individual students which otherwise happens in in schools we can try to borrow from the principles from the schools okay in school education so in the in this yeah very very well they do okay. it okay so instead of terminal examination sir i think instead of terminal examination we can change yeah. the term as theory test or practice yes uh, but i have one exam, I think, uh, sir i have one comment now so far yes, as competency based education and assessment is concerned unless a learner is competent he should not be certified or he should not be allowed to practice or given a degree now our system is a hybrid system where university examination in the form of a terminal examination would be there and also to a certain extent competencies have to be achieved now under this system university examination shall prevail <laughs> okay okay uh, yes we can means i wanted to say that term end exam or some tests or so okay we we have to find out some word for that 
Okay, I think I think it was a great session. Uh, it <laughs> raised a lot of issues and controversies, and uh, of course, there are uh, thank you, thank divided you. opinions. That's how <laughs> but we then will proceed further. It, it, it is good. No it question is and controversy. Yeah. How can we go on? <laughs> yeah, it is healthy. We can uh, go. It, 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 yeah, it actually has given us the opportunity to agree to disagree, and uh, we'll we'll evolve. And finally, there will be a model which will be more or less acceptable to most of us. And then flexibility is there in at our own setting. We can also do whatever uh, system otherwise works for us, or we believe that we'll that's work. Why, that's okay, why, sir. I am asking all of you to develop some sort of uh, planning so that we can see Absolutely. many such plans and then we can gain something on uh, out of that of course so that's why very uh, nice. very very, very well done thank you very much thank you so much thank you very much with this way thank you thank all you. you thank you, thank you. Thank you. 
हेलो हाँ जी जय श्री कृष्ण 